Hello, 7th graders. So we are going to talk about the very last section we're going to learn before the end of the school year. And that's section 9.3. It talks about the surface area of a cylinder. So how do we find those, right? We've already figured out how to do the surface area of prisms, which are like boxes. And then we did the surface area of pyramids, right? So now this last section I want us to work on is figuring out the surface area of a cylinder. So I already drew a cylinder on here. Pretend it's like a soup can or something, a pop can, whatever. And I also drew the net of what that would look like. And it looks kind of confusing right now, but I'll explain it, okay? So when we look at a cylinder, it's got two bases, right? Top and bottom. And sometimes like when you open a can, then you take off the top base. But normally when we're looking at shapes, we want to think of it as having a top base and a bottom base in a cylinder, okay? And then we've got the part that goes around it, the lateral surface, and that's like where you put the label, right? And so I tried to draw it out over here like the net would be. So we've got base, base, and the lateral surface. That kind of looks like a rectangle because this end would meet with that end, right? And it would make a big wrap around. okay? So the formula you're going to need for this is right here in green. And you're going to need to write this down because it is not one that's uh, like the pyramids or like the prisms where I could say, okay, look at all the shapes and find the area of each shape and add it together. We can't quite do that with this one because we can't just say here's a circle and here's a circle and here's a rectangle and do uh, area of a circle, area of a circle, length times width. It doesn't quite work the same way in a cylinder. So you need to know how to figure out the circles. We already know that. But this lateral surface is going to have a little different Plan, and that's why I wrote this out for you. So the formula is surface area equals 2 pi r squared, which if you remember, pi r squared is the area of a circle, right? And the reason why we have the 2 is because there are two circles, right? Top base, bottom base. So 2 pi r squared. That part is for the circles or the bases, whatever you want to call it. Okay, then we've got 2 pi r it's almost exactly the same, but instead of squaring that radius, we're going to take it times the height of our lateral surface. Okay, so this part right here, 2 pi r, is almost like our length, right? Length and width, if we were doing a regular old rectangle, but we're not. So we have to replace it, because it kind of curves around, right? We have to replace it with this part of the formula instead. 2 pi r. So see how up here in my drawing, 2 pi r, it relates to this kind of circular um, section, right? Because that's where, um, th that's where like the edge of the lateral surface is. And so 2 pi r, that's figuring out the circumference, right? Because we want to know the circumference of the base. So all we're pretty much figuring out is the area of the circles, right? And then we're figuring out this part right here, which is the circumference. I'm gonna kinda abbreviate that. Circumference, right? Times, because the circumference is this edge that meets the base, times how tall it is, the height, okay? So that's the three parts of our, our, um, our formula. And that you need to write down or else you won't know how to do it. So we're gonna do a quick problem, okay? I already wrote up here that our radius for the, the cylinder is four, okay? And our height is gonna be three. So if I were figuring this out and I were plugging it in, I'm gonna erase this for just one second so I can do some work over here. Okay, if I was working on this, surface area equals two pi r squared plus two pi r h. Okay, let's plug it in. 2 stays the same. Pi, we can replace pi with 3.14. And we know our radius for both of the bases because it's the same, right? The radius is 4. And we have to square that, right? Plus 2 times 3.14, the pi, times the radius, which is 4, times the height, which is 3. Okay, so let's start with this side first. We have to take 2 times 3.14 times 4 squared. So first let's start with the exponent, right, before doing our order of operations. 4 squared is 16. 
And then if we think about it, right, there's that property that says we can multiply things in any order we want if it's all multiplying. So if I've got 16 over here, and I've got two and I've got 3.4, I'm gonna do the one without the decimal first, and then I'll save that, right? So 16 times two is 32. Then I can multiply that by 3.14. So 3.14 times 32, and you get 100.48, okay? That's what I figured out is going to be the combined area. So the area of this base and this base together. So all of the base area is 100.48. If we divided it by two, we'd know what this base was and we know what this base was. But we need them all together anyway, so it's fine. 100.48, okay? Then we gotta add on this part. So we add, here, I'm gonna scoot this over. 2 times 3.14 times 4 times 3. No exponents in this one. So we can use that same multiplication property where we do it in any order, right? So let's take 2 times 4, that's 8. 8 times 3 is 24. Now we have to multiply it by our decimal number, right? So 3.14 times 24. Seven five point three six. Okay, so then all we have to do is add that part together. Hundred and seventy five point eight four. That's going to be your total surface area for this cylinder. You have to follow this pattern. If you don't use that formula, you're going to be all off. And really, all it is, remember, we're finding the area of both of the circles. We're finding the circumference of the circle, right? and then we're uh, multiplying that by the height, okay? So we add the lateral surface part with the base part, and we find the area, okay? If you are still confused, um, they do pretty much the exact same thing that I did in your book on page 370, and they show you the map and like the, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? The net, and they show you uh, the formula and all of that. So if you get confused or if you get stuck, go there and they'll give you some more examples, okay? Good luck.